Renewable energy has just broken more records here in Australia. And this comes amidst the incredible disruption of solar and battery power worldwide. We're seeing growth this year of 29.5% versus last year. Now, to give you some context on this, this is literally the definition of exponential growth because last year, solar rose worldwide by 87%. That's an additional 29.5% on top of the 87% last year. And this means that we're on track globally to hit nine terawatt hours of energy. In the last five years, we have more than doubled the amount of solar worldwide. And here in Australia, well, honestly, a lot of Australians are playing a pretty big part. And I am kind of privileged to be part of that. Really, really stoked because my solar system is generating enough electricity to power two EVs every day on average. Crazy, I know. Anyway, if you want to use my the solar company that I used, Resync Solar, they're amazing, and I highly, highly recommend them. I'll put a link in the description, so if you want to check them out, you can. Renewables have hit a record 102.5% of grid demand in a sign of the future of Australia. Now, we know the um, coalition government the incumbent government who want to get in in the next election, they are promising they will scrap renewable energy in Australia, scrap all the new plans coming in, all the new big batteries, all the solar farms, wind farms that are proposed and that are on track to be built. They'll scrap them in order to build very, very big nuclear power plants, which will take at least 10 years to be constructed. And the plan is then just use lots and lots of coal and wait until these nuclear power plants are built. Now that would add approximately $1,000 to your cost of electricity per year. Don't do that. Just get solar and then you can avoid having to deal with the stress of whatever government does. If that government gets in, that will be very stressful for a lot of people. You can really avoid a lot of that by getting solar and you know, creating most of your own energy yourself. If you have an electric car, then well, you know, you can be almost fully self-sufficient by you know, generating your own power for your EV and for your household. The level of potential renewables here in Australia though, right now, the combination of wind, solar, and hydro energy that was actually produced and curtailed hit a record of 102.1% of electricity demand uh, yesterday. 102.1%, that's on the entire Australian grid. Unfortunately, a lot of that is curtailed because the truth is here in Australia, in many places, we can't yet turn off some of these power plants. So gas power plants, coal power plants, we, uh, we haven't figured out a way to, yet to turn them off. We can reduce the capacity significantly down to about a, a quarter of their normal capacity, a quarter of their normal use, which is great, but we can't completely turn them off. And so that means that a lot of this solar that has been generated, uh, a lot of this renewable energy has been generated has to be wasted. Of course, with some of the biggest batteries in the world being built in Australia, that will only last for so long. Within a few years time, most of the energy will be able to be sucked up into these mega batteries and then we can use that energy like California does in the peak time of the day, the grid. We'll love it, it'll be fantastic for you guys and cost of electricity will decline. Those peak times between 6 to 10 p.m. will be basically 100% supported by mega batteries. The level of potential renewables therefore, the combination of wind, solar and hydro energy produced and curtailed hit 102% of demand. The new record was reached at 12.25 p.m. on Wednesday this week, according to GPE MLOG, says renewaleconomy.com.au. They also said that this beat the previous peak of 101.5%. That was set nearly a year ago. The actual share of generation did not reach a new peak on Wednesday. That stands at 72.1% according to date from the Australian market energy operator. And that's because, yeah, like I said, um, unfortunately, we can't yet shut down these, these power plants completely. Now they will be. Australia absolutely will be. By 2035, I predict that there'll be no more fossil fuels here in Australia. And if you want to know exactly why, I detailed the reasons why in a video I just did today, which is about solar growing faster than anyone imagined, even more than what Tony Sieber predicted. What this means is that wholesale electricity prices fell below zero. And an oversupply of electricity and the need for most coal generators to keep operating at a minimum capacity meant that yeah, a lot of this electricity was just um, destroyed, essentially. So how does this work? Well, to ensure that they are dispatched, Renew Economy says, the coal generators here in Australia bid the price asked for that capacity as low as is needed. Many wind and solar farms are obliged, of course, 
to switch off once wholesale prices fall below zero. More storage, both in the form of batteries and longer duration technologies will help fix that problem. There is some engineering challenges too, but they can be overcome. The market operator is currently operating on a roadmap to ensure all necessary protocols and the ability to replicate the crucial system services traditionally provided by coal and gas generators are in place. The Australian electricity manager or operator, they want to be able to be in a position where they can actually accommodate periods of 100% renewables in Australia's grid in 2025. So that's their goal. That may take them longer, it may take them till 2026, but we'll, we'll be in a position at some point over the next couple of years where we don't have to waste as much of this renewable energy because, well, a lot of it will be stored and a lot of it will be, a lot more of it will be able to be used in the grid. That will mean the faster closure of some of these coal power plants. Keep in mind, Australia has a target of 82% renewables by 2030. Now, a lot of people say that won't be achieved. That's um, too optimistic. That's wild. That's ridiculous. I firmly believe it will. And I think that South Australia and Adelaide have given us the roadmap for how that can be achieved. And well, South Australia themselves said that they'll be 100% renewables within the next year and a half. Clearly, Australia having so much sun and quite a lot of wind as well, it's really the perfect location for a completely renewable grid. The pace of growth is highlighted by this graph, which shows that the share of potential renewables across the main grid has increased from only 30% in 2018 to more than 102%. So we've gone from 30% potential to now 102% within only six years time. Now, 2030, that's essentially well, nearly six years away. So what do we need in order for us to get to 100% renewables? Well, honestly, we need more households to install solar. I know that a lot of people think, um, no, it's not necessary because um, there's already too much solar here in Australia. The media are telling us this stuff. It's not actually true. Some of these enormous batteries. Now, just guys, I'm about to do another video on the biggest battery in Australia. It's no longer the biggest battery in Australia. This keeps on changing. There is a, a, a company now installing a new mega battery in Perth, which will be the second biggest battery in the world. Um, these batteries are being built at incredibly fast pace. Tesla's new battery in uh, Queensland, I believe in might be in Brisbane. That one is just about to be completed. That has 144 Tesla megapacks. And these battery, these enormous batteries are being deployed into Australia's grid at a record pace, the fastest pace we've ever seen before. So the more solar we have, the better. Eventually, you know, we're seeing a situation where you're not getting much for your solar. You need the feed-in tariffs, they're going down. That will stop because the feed-in tariffs will actually be useful. I mean, the feed-in of solar, all this excess solar, we'll be able to use it rather than just wasting it. So that'll go into batteries and therefore energy companies will actually want that solar. Eventually, that won't be the case. Eventually, there'll be so much renewable energy here in Australia that honestly, you'll probably just power your own house and you won't really worry about being part of the grid. But for the next five to 10 years, that solar will actually become very, very valuable. To give you some context, rooftop solar alone has already reached a world leading 100% share of demand in South Australia. What about New South Wales? Well, I'm obviously living in New South Wales now. It has hit a new peak of 52.1%. Queensland, where two newly commissioned battery projects, the 100 megawatt, 200 megawatt hour chinchilla battery and the 270 megawatt 540 megawatt hour western downs battery also are playing a major part in queensland's grid and this set a new battery recharge discharge record in queensland of 277 megawatts at 6 30 pm this week the previous record was only 203 so as you can see records in renewable energy are being destroyed all around australia now renewaconomy.com.au is probably one of the best sources worldwide for this sort of information. I highly recommend you use them. Giles Parkinson has been writing about this for many years, and I've got a lot of respect for the work he does. It's so important to this transition. I believe publications like this are inspiring. They're inspiring Australia to move fast, and I highly recommend you read them and stay up to date with this information. Share this stuff with your friends. You know, if you're on social media, don't bother with these ridiculous memes. You know, 
trolling through social media, wasting your time. Honestly, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel shit. It does. I know what it's like. I do it sometimes. What I suggest, guys, let's let's try to do this if we can. Share these sorts of articles. Share this information in your Facebook feeds. You know, rather than um, you know, getting involved in um, you know anti EVs and fighting all this sort of stuff, arguing with people. Let's just bombard people with this positive information about renewable energy, about about electric cars, how the two together are just the perfect combination. Let's bombard people with this information. Let me know your thoughts as well. Thank you for watching.